everyone. My name is Chloe and welcome to part two of my book list um, summertime bingo vlog. Right? Did I say it? So something, something about that doesn't feel right. But um, book list Thursday, summertime bingo vlog. Anyway, um, welcome to part two. So I, this is actually Chloe from the future. As I was editing this vlog, one, I found out that it was really, really long. So I split it into two. And two, I found out that I did not talk about a book that I wanted to talk about. So um, the book I'm going to talk about now is Someone We Know by Sherry Lapina. So I give this four stars. I really enjoyed it. Um, I love Sherry Lapina, so I'm not surprised that I liked it. And this one, I... I think like part of it, the pitches I had heard about it kind of had me expecting something different than what it is. So what I had heard was that this is a book about a neighborhood and there's like a teenage boy that is breaking into neighbors' houses and like getting on their computers, snooping around, finding stuff out about the neighbors. That's true. But what the story is mainly about is one of the women in the neighborhood has gone missing and her husband reported her and the cops like as missing and the cops are like, eh, whatever, don't really care. Um, until one just ha so happened to find her body in the a trunk of a car. And so then it's trying to figure out who done it. And of course the husband's the main suspect because it's always the husband, but Everybody in this neighborhood has like a connection to her. And a lot of the men were like cheating, sleeping with her. Um, there was a lot of stuff going on that like, there's a lot of red herrings. And I think like, I love these like neighborhood dramas, especially because I live in like a cul-de-sac neighborhood, like suburbia central. And I can totally see something like crazy like that happening. Not really. Cause whatever, it's pretty safe, but, um, you know what I'm saying? Like, I just, I eat it up. I think they're fun. But this one, it got a little repetitive just because everybody, it was kind of like same story, different people. Um, and everybody had like a motive, but I still really enjoyed it. Like her writing style is just on point. It's so good. And I flew through it and was thoroughly entertained. So, um, four stars on that. So that is Sherry Lapina, someone we know. Now let's get into the rest of the footage. Hey everyone, so it's the next day and um, one of the prompts for this readathon is uh, read a backlist book, which could be like anything obviously. And so I was going to do something different, but I just read Gentle and Lonely, to, Gentle and Lonely, Gentle and Lowly today. And I loved it so much that I really want to talk about it. So this is a backlist book. It is a Christian nonfiction written in um, 2020 and it is about... Um, just God's heart and how um, Jesus describes himself as gentle and lowly and just how he is so compassionate and kind and gives us so much mercy and grace and just how he is one of us and he knows human sin and understands human sin and he's here to meet you wherever you are and um, this book is really for anybody who's like I have screwed up so much like how could God still love me kind of thing um, or I mean it's really for anybody like if you're really feeling in a place of like unworthiness I feel like this is a really good story or really it's not a story it's nonfiction, but a really good book to read um, just to remind you of like God's heart for you and how much he loves you and it just was really good. I think it's definitely the kind of book that would be best read like with a group, um, physically, slowly. And like I said, I listened to it on audio all today. And I don't think that's the best way to ingest all of the content. However, I really enjoyed my experience because um, it was almost like somebody just like speaking encouragement over you and just speaking like truth over you. And, um, so yeah, I think I could have gotten more out of it if I would have read it physically and more slowly. And I plan to do that someday. Um, but for the first read through, it was really great. And I definitely recommend it. Krista from books and jams just did a month long, um, read along of this book. So for the month of June, I think it was every week they read a certain amount of chapters and she had a live show on Sundays maybe. Um, and I could never be a part of the live shows cause it just was at a time that doesn't work for our family, which means I did not like keep up in reading. And so that's why I'm just reading it now. Um, but I'm, I plan to go back and watch all those live shows and see what they all thought about it. Um, because I just thought it was really like moving and really good. So, um, that is that what I just read for that. And, um, 
Now I'm sitting outside. If you can see, um, I'm outside and I'm about to do my try a chapter tag, which will be its own video. So I will link it down below. But also I wanted to clarify, I got confused about some prompts. So um, the Beach House by Jane Green was for like a bookish word in the title or whatever, um, because beach is, or not a bookish word, a summer word. So beach is a summer word. And then um, Someone We Know by Sherry Lapina, um, I, I think I already did a review of that, but that was for a favorite author of mine. So that is where we're at. We're trucking along, making good progress. So um, I will check in later. Okay. Hi, everyone. So I have finished. No, I haven't finished, but I've started another thing. So um, I did a tag video, or well, a try chapter tag, because I called my friend Bree from um, Brianna Bashedly is her name on Instagram. She used to be following for romance. Um, her name is Brie Hill. She used to be on Instagram. Most of you know her. She is just a doll and a gift to everybody. She's just the best soul in the world. And so I FaceTimed her and we went through all of my unread physical books, like unread shelves that I only have physically. I cannot get a copy digitally because I was wondering what to read next physically. I read them a lot slower, but I always want a physical read going. So I did a try a chapter tag and I will um, link that down below because that will have already come out. So I'll link that down below if you want to see what three she picked and how I, how I felt about the first chapters of those three. But what I'm going to be reading for um, that choice is Good Luck by Whitney Gaskell. So I just read the first chapter and it's about this girl named Lucy. She works at a um, like private academy high school. She teaches English and um, she gets fired because one of the boys accuses her of sexual harassment. Now the reason he did it was not because she sexually harassed him, but because she gave him a fail, failing grade on a test because he's a, just a very entitled kid who doesn't feel the need to study. So he failed the test and he no longer can play soccer. So he's upset about it. He threatened her and he made good on his threat and went to the um, principal and had her fired. So now she's fired. She's got a boyfriend that um, he broke with, broke up with her at one point, but now they're back together. It's been two years since that. They're living together, and she thinks maybe a ring is coming. Um, she kind of is, like, feeling her biological clock tick because she's 32, and she just, you know, her best friend has kids, etc. So she's deciding where to go on this day when she's, like, really upset by her lack of job. And um, she goes to her best friend's house, and her best friend is, like, totally not the domestic type, but she's a stay at home mom to two twin three-year-old boys. Um, she's a former lawyer and she just seems like she's tiny and fiery and sounds like a really fun character to follow. Um, and Lucy also, I feel like really endeared to her already. So that is what I'll be reading and I will check in periodically. It'll probably be like amongst other clips, um, because this is going to take me a while. Probably it's the biggest of the three books and it's almost 400 pages, I think. So it will probably take me a while, but I will check in and let you know as I, as I read it. Hey everyone. So if you guys watch my TBR, um, I'm sorry because I'm not staying with it really at all. I don't think, but I have finished one thing and I'm in the middle of another. So I finished, um, one Italian Summer by Rebecca Searle, which could have been a five star. It could be water on the cover. It could be a favorite author of mine, although I've only read in five years because I think that's all she's written. So I don't know that that's really fair to say. Um, so I am using it though, I think for three colors on the cover because there's orange, there's blue, there's white. I think um, you'll see the cover while I'm talking, but I don't right now. Um, and I am really interested, like, I really am intrigued by the way people are thinking about this book because I've heard almost all negative reviews and even from people who loved in five years, I'm hearing a lot of negativity about one Italian summer and I can see why. So this book basically... I'm calling it a women's fiction because I would say the main storyline is about this girl. I can't remember her name. Um, I can't remember her name, but she is um, really, really close with her mom. And then her mom dies, which happens like right at the beginning. You are told about it. You don't know her mom really at all, but her and her mom, like she had a terminal illness of some sort and her and her mom were planning to go to Italy, um, like amongst this sickness. Well, her mom dies before they can go. And so she goes by herself. And when she's there, she meets somebody who she thinks is her mom, um, 30 years ago or whatever. And so 
that is the story and her like coming to terms with loss, the loss of her mother, also kind of finding out what she wants because she's in a marriage that she's not sure she wants to be in. Um, she's just kind of like unsure of a lot of things. And so this Italian vacation is when she goes on her by herself and she's just trying to figure stuff out. I would say that's the main plot line. However, if you really don't like cheating in books, this is not going to be the book for you because she meets a guy while she's in Italy and the fact that she's married doesn't seem to really enter her mind. And I mean, so I don't know, that really did bother me. Um, there's also not a lot of explanation about, um, like why her mom is there, how her mom is there, how that all works out. That didn't bother me too terribly much. I still enjoyed the story. I gave it four stars. Um, I feel like her writing style is one that is just really easy to get along with. And the main character was one that was like easy to identify with. Not in the sense that like, I'm going to go to Italy and cheat on my husband and completely disregard my marriage. But, um, you could see, like, I could see how uh, some of the motivation behind her actions, given that she's in this like state of grief and, um, loss and kind of like not knowing what to do with herself. So I liked it. Um, I don't, I understand why people don't like it, but I don't dislike it as much as everyone else does. I still gave it four stars and enjoyed the read. Now I'm reading another one that could be a five-star prediction. Um, it's also a new to me author. It also has water on the cover. And I think that's what I'm using it for is water on the cover. And that's, uh, every summer after I think. And this one, I can I like keep hearing about it. It was not on my radar. I was not going to read it, but I can't stop hearing about it. And it sounds like exactly what I love. So I've heard people promote it. So this could also be like a favorite, uh, YouTuber or something recommends it. Cause I've heard a lot of people recommending it, but that's not what I'm using it for. Um, I've heard a lot of people compare this to like, if you liked, um, oh my gosh, I'm blanking. Can you tell, like, it's Monday, and it has been, like, one of those days where we had an overscheduled morning, so Annie had speech, then we had to go to the library for some stuff, then Ainsley had gymnastics, and we've just been, like, one minute early to everything, which I, I like to be, like, five or ten minutes early, um, and we've just been, like, running, but um, my favorite Christina Lauren book, the one that's serious, um, oh my gosh, you guys are probably losing your minds, but, uh, whatever. The Christina Lauren book that I love that's about the first love, second chance. I've heard it compared to that a lot and it's first love, second chance, which is my favorite trope. Um, so this is about this woman who is going back to her, well, like her family's, um, cottage, lake house cottage. However, it's not her family's lake house cottage anymore. She's going back and, um, I can't even remember why you guys, I feel like I'm in such a brain fog right now. So maybe I shouldn't even update about this, but, oh, she's go, no, she's going because her, so she had this, they had this lake house cottage, her and her family next door were these two boys, Sam and Charlie. And, um, they were friends. And so her and Sam had a relationship, but the families were close in general. Charlie, the older brother, calls her now present day and is like, hey, our mom died. Um, I know we haven't talked in forever, but I think you should come to the funeral. So she comes. And so she's confronted with Sam and Charlie. And we don't know why her and Sam broke up. We don't know anything. But we are getting now and then timelines from when they were teenagers. Like, I think it started when they were like 13 all the way up to late teens. Um, so we're getting that timeline as well as present day and like seeing them interact. And, um, just that, like, again, first love, like stories get me, get me in the feels because just the innocence of a first love and the like all inness of a first love, you're not jaded yet. I just love, like, I love first loves. Um, I also like completely relate to the mom and like feeling like it was kind of a second mom and her feelings now knowing she died. Um, I feel like are relatable and like almost had me tearing up. So 
I have a feeling this could be a really emotional book. Um, I'm not that far into it at all, maybe 25%. So that's what I'm reading now. I will check in when I finish it. Today is kind of a like fly by the seat of our pants day. It's a Monday. So I don't know if it'll be today. I don't know what it'll be, but it is um, the coolest day we're going to have in a while. It is, a, I think 100 is the high today. So it's going to be above 100 for the next like foreseeable future. So pray for me. <laughs> um, and that's it. We'll talk to you in the next clip. Oh my gosh. I'm also getting on here because I was updating my bingo board this morning and I am going to tell you that I've been reading outside a lot because I cannot remember to vlog when I'm reading outside. Like I just can't. And part of it is because like I'm either with like my family and so it's like just chaotic or like there's a lot going on and like I'm using one hand to read and one hand to do something with a kid or something. So I don't have a, a hand to vlog. Um, or, and I just can't remember, I guess. So I've been reading outside, so I'm checking that off. Also, I just told you guys we went to the library. We were driving there and I thought, huh, take some footage of going to the library, especially because I shared with you guys the theme for the summer is Oceans of Possibilities. And um, there's like a bunch of cool ocean stuff. Did I vlog it? No. And the reason is again, because we were kind of crunched for time. I've got two little kids and a 26 week, I think pregnant belly and it's hot and I'm making a thousand excuses, but I didn't vlog that either. However, I did do that. So check that off and check um, the reading outside off. But also the cocktail mocktail thing, you guys, I have been all about the Mio, uh, like Mio squirt waters lately, like the squirt you put it, squirt it in your water. I don't know. I don't like the ones that you have to shake. Like I don't like crystal lights or anything like that. Any sort of powdered thing. I just don't like it. But the Mio's, I'm all about that. So I've been drinking a lot of orange tangerine. That's the only flavor that'll do. Orange tangerine Mio. So uh, I'm going to call that a mocktail. I mean, it would be good with some vodka or tequila in it. So I'm calling it a mocktail. So check that off as well. I'm, I'm killing it. I'm going to get this done before July is over. That is my goal. So we'll see if you see this video in July or August or when you see it, but it's also going to be like three hours long if I don't stop talking. So we'll talk to you in the next clip. Hey everyone. So it's a couple days later and I have finished every summer after and you guys, so did I have dreams about this book? Yes, I did. Did I have to stop and take like emotional breaks? Yes, I did. I really like this book. I gave it four stars um, because I think the ending was a little abrupt. There were some things that I didn't love about the book, but I found the main character really relatable and the story was really relatable. And I just felt like, um, again, I've just got a thing for that first love trope, like the innocence of it, the purity of it. And I thought it was really good. Um, yeah, I'll just leave it there. Uh, I re It really impacted me. It wasn't the best I've ever read, but it definitely makes me want to read even more of this trope. And I really liked it. So um, I'm still reading Good Luck by uh, Whitney Gaskell. And I'm liking that. I only have like 140 pages left in, in it physically. So that feels good. Um, it's a, She won, has won the lottery. So I think I t updated um, after the first chapter or in the try chapter tag, basically. She is just really down on her luck. Um, she gets fired from her job. She walks in on her boyfriend cheating, except, or her fiance, or something, et cetera, et cetera. And then she wins um, $84 million in the lottery. So now she is trying to figure out, like, she's trying to avoid the press. She's trying to figure out kind of who's genuine, who's not, how to navigate this life now, um, and what she really wants. And so I would say the middle portion is kind of lagging because she is... Um, she's from somewhere, Ocean Falls, Florida, I think, and she's in Palm Beach and she's just kind of living with a friend who comes from money and ha like her parents have like a vacation home and they're just kind of living life and she's kind of meeting people and doing things, um, but not a whole lot's happening. So I, again, I don't think this really needs to be 400 pages. I think, um, I mean, I'm not done with it, so I don't know, but like I, it's definitely slowing down here in the middle. So I will update um, when I finish that or when I read something else. Hey everyone. So I don't know if I said the date on, um, any of these clips, but right now it is July 23rd 
And um, I yesterday I finished Good Luck, which is the book by Whitney Gaskell that I'm reading physically. And I feel like I read it pretty quickly for the fact that it's a 400 page book and I only had it physically. I feel like I did pretty good. So pat myself on the back here. Um, so I liked it. I am giving it four stars. This is definitely kind of what I expected. It's a women's fiction. She has the really hard time at the beginning. She wins the lottery. She goes to Palm Beach to stay with her friend and just kind of reinvent herself and try to figure things out. And I stand by what I said in the fact that I think like it could have been edited to be 300, maybe 350 pages, not quite 400, um, because it got a little monotonous or a little redundant in the middle where things are just kind of happening the same way, but, um, it was cute. And so things I didn't love, I mean, the relationship that she ends up in the end, it sounded good. It just was a little underdeveloped or a little, like, I wanted a little bit more from that but I just a little bit and it, there was nothing like exceptional about this one but I if you like women's fiction and like just like hanging out with a character for a while I liked it and um so four stars on that and now I'm gonna start The Bodyguard by Catherine Center and this is one that I'm really excited about and it fits the prompts of I think flowers on the cover and maybe that's not the prompt but I think it is so um, I am at the library right now. I actually just went to Sherwin-Williams because this is Saturday and this weekend our goal is to paint our guest room pink because uh, my girls rooms are each pink and so we are getting rid of our guest room and turning it into the baby's room at least for now. Um, eventually the plan is that at least two of the girls will share a room but right now while everybody's still napping and stuff like I just can't mess with it and so if we have guests um, my oldest will sleep with me and they can have her room. So that's where we're at for today. But I went to Sherwin Williams and now I'm at the library returning stuff, but I'm going to sit here and read for a second because Jeremy's trying to figure out if there's any other painting supplies he needs. Um, so exciting day. Hey everyone. Um, so I have finished The Bodyguard by Catherine Center and I really liked it. I'm giving it four stars. So I'm a fan of Catherine Center. I'm not surprised that I liked it, but this one is about a female bodyguard that she's just having a rough time. Like she, her mom dies. And then the day after the funeral, her boyfriend breaks up with her and says some like really not kind things. And then she, like her boss is like trying to make her take a break and she won't. And so he, he puts her on this case that's in Texas where they live. And so she's like bummed about it because she was ready to move, like move, you know, at least for an assignment. And so she's upset. And then she finds out it's Jack Stapleton, who is like this mega movie star, heartthrob, et cetera. So she goes and he doesn't want his family to know, like he's in town with his family because his mom is undergoing cancer treatments. And so he's got this stalker in Texas. And so that's why he needs a bodyguard, but he doesn't want his family to know like what's going on with this stalker. And so he says, let's fake date. So that's the premise. And um, she's like, okay, whatever. Cause she'll do anything for her job and her clients. And she's devoted. And I, um, thought it was so cute. Now there were some things I didn't love, like the whole mom having cancer thing. That's obviously something that is like near and dear to my heart. And I felt like they kind of like trivialized it because that was really just the reason he was in town. And it was kind of there throughout the book, but not much. Um, not as much as I feel like it would genuinely impact the family. And like, it just kind of, like I said, got trivialized a little bit. There is a deeper storyline with his brother um, that I appreciated. And I just wish, again, that he would have, like, sought therapy or something outside of Hannah, our main character. But that's okay. Um, minor complaint. And I thought it was cute. Thought it was charming. Thought it was fun. Um, I really liked the ending. And I really liked Hannah, our main character, because she was, like, pretty, um, like, take no crud from anybody. And knew what she wanted. And very, like emotional as you would be, but like able to like not let those emotions run her. And she was logical in a way that I admire and I just loved it. So, um, four stars on that. Not my favorite Catherine, Catherine center, but it was a good one. So, uh, that was flowers on the cover. Now I'm listening to the Baxters by Karen Kingsbury. And I think that fits one of these prompts. Maybe I'm wrong. Um, I don't know, but we're sitting outside of gymnastics. So we're going to go in and I'll update later. Hey everyone, it is um, later. We are just um, in the car, moving the car so we can play basketball in our driveway. Cause we have one car that's in our driveway and one that's in the garage because 
Jeremy's got a garage full of stuff. And so if you guys have hoarder husbands, I, I would assume you'll understand. But so we're moving the car so that we can play basketball because it is currently um, like a heat advisory. And so if we're not outside um, by like 11 a.m., it's not gonna happen. So we're gonna try to get some outside time before it gets too, too hot. And yeah, but I read um, and finished the Rejected Writers Book Club and this by Suzanne Kelman, and it was so cute. So like reading the premise, I, I feel like I've put this on a couple TBRs and um, reading the premise, I was always like, am I reading the right thing? Because it's all about these women who get together and celebrate their rejection letters. They're all trying to write and send in different like um, stories to different people and um, Y'all, that was really creepy. Somebody just drove down our street and stopped to wave at my kids, but um, don't know who that is either. I think it's the guy working on the deck next door. Sorry, this is like hmm, something shiny. But anyway, so these women are all trying to write and they all keep getting rejection letters and they're almost at their 500th rejection letter. And so they get our main, um, or our main, ca main character, her daughter, is in publishing of some sort, I think. And so they need her help. She works at a library. They need her help to um, get back a positive, like somebody, somebody got their manuscript approved and they wanna get it back because they submitted it assuming it would be rejected and it's actually the story of their mother and it's super personal and they actually don't want it published. And so um, they're trying to get it back. So. They go um, on a road trip to San Francisco from Seattle to, to confront this publisher. So it's really cute. Um, the last bit of it had me literally laughing out loud. Like these characters are hilarious. The beginning part, like the whole premise was kind of hard to get behind just because our main character, um, she's going to San Francisco anyway to help her daughter because her daughter is pregnant with twins and she's having a really hard time, like lots of preterm labor symptoms and really bad nausea and all this kind of stuff. She's having a really hard time. So she's going to help her and she just gets railroaded by one of the other like writing club members. And like, she does not run the show at all. And like, you need to stand up for yourself just a little bit. Like the doormat thing really bothers me and it was like extreme. So that was bothersome. And it took a while for like the humor to really kick in for me. So I liked it though. I gave it four stars, especially after the ending. Like I feel like the last couple scenes like had me laughing and I wish I could see it as a movie. So um, the other thing I'm gonna talk about right now is uh, check out a new booktuber, Instagrammer, whatever. And I am going to leave a list down below. I got connected with this a group of Christian um, booktubers that are just literally a godsend. Like I was some Oshina from Oshina Reads Them All. She's in the group and she was talking about her book club pick. And I was like, wait, what? There's a Christian booktuber book club? And so I got connected with these ladies and there, I think are 14 of us. And so I will link the other 13 down below because if I start to verbally list them, um, I know I'll forget somebody and they like, nobody should be forgotten in this group. So I'm going to link them down below. They are all awesome. And it truly is a God thing for me because it came at a time, like I had no idea that I was about to be needing a lot of prayers and they have been prayer, prayer warriors for me and just kind of a light and watching all of their channels has been such a light. Um, a lot of them were new to me. And so I really suggest that you go follow all of them because they are awesome. So I will link them down below. Um, last thing I'm on the last prompt. Uh, because the Rejected Writers Book Club was for a prompt or a book with either book or list in the title because book club has book. Um, so the last one I'm doing is The Arrangement by Kirsten Moglin. So um, I'm reading this as uh, like your favorite creator recommends because I've heard tons of people recommend this book. And like, I think I can't remember who all specifically, but I have heard a lot of people recommend this. And so um, I'm gonna be reading it. It's a short six hour thriller audio and it's on my August TBR anyway. So we're gonna get through it so far so good. Like I feel like Kirsten Mogling books are all pretty straightforward or at least the ones I have read are pretty straightforward and they kind of hook you from the beginning. So. The um, premise of this book is about a couple who their marriage is going stale. Their kids are all like teenagers now, I think. And um, so they make this deal that they are going to get on dating apps. And on Tuesday, she gets to go out on like no strings attached dates. And um, 
on Thursday, he gets to, and they don't question each other. They don't talk about it. Um, it's just something to hopefully spice up their marriage, which this just seems like destined for problems. And it turns into a thriller at some point. So I know things don't work out great. So I will let you know what I think as I continue to read that. And um, we'll see you later. Hey everyone. So this is real life vlog status right now. Um, I just went, Jeremy, long story short, it's Saturday afternoon and, um, we bought new furniture for Annie, our middle child now, um, because she's currently using like our nursery furniture. And so we are going to move the nursery furniture to the baby's room and we got Annie big girl furniture that matches our oldest daughters. So cool great it all came last week and it's in boxes in our garage and it's making me nuts so um jeremy is building furniture with the girls and he was like hey would you be willing to go get beer <laughs> because it's hot and he wants a beer while he makes the things and i was like hey if you will build furniture and watch our kids i will gladly go get beer but i napped with ainsley today and put on my nightgown because I did not think we were going anywhere and took off my makeup, did not think we were going anywhere. And so I, I literally just zipped this jacket up over my nightgown. I'm wearing athletic shorts. I threw on a hat and uh, some glasses and I went to the liquor store and bought beer with my uh, big old pregnant belly and probably a sight to see, but it was awesome because the only other person in the store was like an 80 year old woman and she was a hoot, man. She was funny. So hopefully we provided the guys some entertainment but um anyway I also I got I I don't want to take it apart because then I, I will surely drop everything going into the house but the Natty Light Natter Days beer um it's like Natty Light with and this one's strawberry lemonade and my friend um is at the lake today and she was texting me and said it tastes like summer beer which is like if I'm gonna drink beer it's gonna be summer beer if you don't know what summer beer is it's beer vodka and lemonade um I do not like beer at all but I I can tolerate a summer beer so I bought that for Jeremy obviously I'm not going to try it but hopefully it's delicious um so back to the books what we're actually talking about um I finished the arrangement by Kirsten Moglin and I really liked it I am giving it four and a half stars <sighs> our neighbor is about to drive by me and I'm vlogging on my street. So I'm going to move really quick and then I'll be back. Okay. I'm back. I was just embarrassed because I was like on my cul-de-sac and she's our babysitter's mom. She's a really sweet girl, but I like didn't want to explain vlogging because nobody in my real life really knows about my channel because I'm embarrassed and I don't know why, but that's a different topic anyway. So the arrangement, um, I think I told you guys the premise of this story. Basically, it's about this husband and wife who are trying to spice things up in their marriage by dating other people. They both go on a dating app. She has Tuesdays, he has Thursdays, and they decide to go on dates. Now, first of all, I did not know this going in, but the main character, the main female, her name is Ainsley, which is my oldest daughter's name. And then they like make secret names um, for the dating app that they're on because they want to like protect their kids' privacy. And they also like don't want anybody to know what's going on. So she uses the name Annie. So it's this girl is Ainsley and Annie, which is crazy. Um, it made me laugh a lot, especially like considering the subject matter that it's my daughter's name. So that's kind of weird. But um, anyway, the plot goes sinister. Like, like we said, like what could go wrong? A lot of things could go wrong. And the people they choose to date are interesting and they both kind of have a different strategy on it. And, um, this book does have a little bit of steamy time, but not really a lot. Basically somebody starts to maybe find out what's going on and find out who they really are. And, things get weird. And now this, uh, that's all I'm going to say about the book. This is the type of book where nobody is really likable. Our main characters both do things that you wouldn't really root for. And like, if you really need somebody to root for in your books, this is not the book for you because obviously the premise, there's a lot of reasonings that don't make sense behind both of them. And a lot of things that are not great with both of them. We do get perspectives from both of them. And I really liked that. However, part of my complaint comes with that too, because we got their inner monologues or their inner dialogues and it didn't necessarily match up all the time with like their behaviors and this book is definitely like twist after twist after twist which I loved I read the whole thing yesterday and it was like 200 and something pages so not a long book but I definitely could have read like more of the second one if I didn't have more stuff on my TBR that I had to get to first so it is definitely like one you will not want to put down however 
some of the twists came out of left field and I think it's because it was so short. They like, it felt underdeveloped because it was so short. And like there is a big twist in the end that came out of nowhere. And I feel like I could see why a lot of people don't like this book because of those kind of twists. Because it's like you never could have guessed it. It feels really out of place and it feels weird. So I personally loved it for entertainment value and just like stress and tension value. I was stressed the whole time and I liked it. So I'm giving it four, four and a half stars and I'm excited to read number two and three, which is great because I have to read number three for NetGalley. So um, I'm going to be reading two and three here soon. So that I think is the end of my bingo board. Because this video is so long already, I'm not going to like verbally go through all the prompts and everything. I'll just put up a screen at the end that you um, can see what prompts hit everything, I think, unless I like can edit it down and get it to a manageable length. But Thank you, Sarah and Lindsay, for hosting this. It was a really fun way to like guide my reading and maybe read some stuff. Um, and everybody who's a, or who's like recommending the arrangement, they're right. So I think everything is done, and that is it. We'll see you in the next one. Thank you so much for watching.